Hey, welcome back to the worm. I'm uh I'm gonna give a try at doing some more work here. My back is uh it's been bad for about a week now, but I'm feeling better. I gotta do something to loosen it up. Got up this morning and uh put my headphones in. I got uh Hemingway's uh The Sun Also Rises, so good book in my ears and went out in the forest there for a second and I was like, oh look at the mushrooms. I haven't seen those yet. Oh look at those. So I spent about an hour just walking around looking at mushrooms. Check all these out. I'll just do them real fast so you don't get bored. That's crazy, right? <laughs> they just, in the last, what, six days uh, since I've been laid up, everything just popped up. Had cool weather, a little bit of rain, and they're just coming up like crazy. So fun to just take a few minutes away and walk around and look at that stuff. So you may notice that uh, absolutely nothing has moved in, uh, in the last week. I think, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was cutting these starter strips, shingle starter strips. When my back zapped me and I just set everything down and left it. So I don't know, I'll try, see how this goes, see how my back feels. I'm not going to do any lifting or any bending or anything, but all I got to do is put those strips on the edge and then, and then I got to do, of course, the shingles or two, which I have to do from the bottom anyway, so no big deal. I'm not going to carry any packs of shingles up there, so I don't know, let's see how it goes. Really want to get this place closed in. Not sure if you got to do this with architectural shingles or not, but you know, it's not going to hurt anything, I guess. I'm not showing you this to be gory. <laughs> it's not nearly as bad as it looks, but I just give myself a nail piercing. Uh, it just all went together. That little blob on the bottom there, the nail went in where all that blood's coming from, and that little blob on the bottom, it came back out. You've probably seen how I hold nails when they're real short like that, instead of holding them between two fingers and trying to not hit your fingers, I put them between my fingers like this, and that one, was sitting there and it was it must have been up too high and I still had some skin underneath it and I hit it oh man that really stung I put a I must have put a little hole in there and I picked it up and the nail was all the way through went in and came back out <laughs> I historically in my lifetime I go through a lot of band-aids I mean probably significantly significantly more than the average person since I've been out here think I've used three band-aids which is amazing I mean running chainsaws and using knives and all sorts of stuff all day I think I think it's probably because I always wear gloves well that makes sense this is like the one time I don't have my gloves on because I couldn't uh, maneuver the nails around in my fingers <laughs> what a dummy <laughs> well that's a first aid kit huh I put this together when I lived on the sailboat and we're gonna do a bunch of offshore sailing, which we never did. But I went through list after list after list of different people's uh, first aid kits for uh, being way the heck out in the middle of nowhere and kind of added them all together. Got all sorts of medications, eye drops. Oh, well, I got stuff for lidocaine, stuff for stitches. Nice stapler, maybe I should staple it. Maybe just some way outdated antibiotic ointment and a selection of quite browned uh, <laughs> band-aids. Ooh, those are old. <laughs> I 
Yeah, look at that. Looks like a snake bite. Might not have actually come out the other side, but I did have to pull it out of there. Many years ago, I took a wilderness first responder course just because I spent so much time in the in the woods. I thought it'd be good to learn the first aid and CPR and all that stuff. And the one the only thing I really remember from it is the guy said, absolutely never buy anything but fabric band-aids. So that's what I got for whatever it is, 72 hours of class. But it's true. They're the only ones that really work that last. I do still have lidocaine and xylocaine and a lot of sutures and all my friends know it's like one of my lifelong goals is to give somebody stitches i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody else i'd do it on myself too if it was someplace i could easily reach but i don't know why just really want to give someone stitches you volunteering uh -huh. It's interesting the color of the shingles is pretty consistent doesn't look too splotchy or blotchy but no look at the difference in those it's perfectly lined up here and considerably off there I don't know it's pretty bizarre the thing I found about doing roofs at least in areas like this back in the woods one I don't care what it looks like once it's done I just want it to hold the, <laughs> the rain and the snow out and I'm done with it but even if you did care what it looked like Back here, you can't see it. There could be one shingle that's like lime green that I don't think you'd ever know it. Oh, baby. I'm starting to get so excited for next week, party week. It really is, I think, the best week of the year. As you guys know, do it, Tito and I do it every year, have done it for many, many years. And the last three years we've done it out here. I guess this will be the third year. Usually just invite a ton of people, people come, people go, they drop in, drop out, stay for a day, stay for a few days, camp. And uh, Tito just called yesterday while I was up here roofing to let me know that he got a projector. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to set it up, maybe, uh, maybe in the gazebo or something so we can watch, play some movies at night, maybe some stand-up comedy. I don't know, it's going to be great. It's just so fun to have something that weird, like a big old movie screen out in the middle of the woods where you can watch, you know, watch movies. I think at some point we're gonna have to pick a, a spot in the woods, clear out some trees, maybe make some like pews or reclining seats and a, and a screen that can stay out there. You could pull down, just be fun. You know, it's always this time of year, our uh, party week. So the bugs are gone and it's nice and cool. You could sit out there at night, make some popcorn over the fire and then sit out there and watch a good flick. Oh man, we got so much, so much fun stuff next week. I think I'll probably, I think the last two years I did make videos on party week. If indeed I did, I'll put uh, links right here if you want to go back and watch those. This this year is going to be great. Do our best to cook as much meat on the over the fire as possible. Have two fires. I haven't burned any of my uh, building scraps or anything for a month maybe. I'm just saving it all up. I've got some trees that are that we cut down to mill up for all this stuff and I've left all the extra rounds and limbs and stuff so we can just as we need it, just drag it over, but probably keep one or two fires going for, it was supposed to be, I think it's usually three to five days, sometimes seven days, and it sounds like this is going to be 10 days, so we're going to need a lot of firewood. What were we doing here? Oh, shingling. Let's shingle. Usually when you do shingles like this, you know, you get to the end of the course and just let the shingles hang over the end. Because I'm not in a super hurry, I'm not a professional, I don't need to get this done in a certain amount of time to get paid. I found I like to cut them off, you know, only leave a couple inches hanging over the end. And then they don't sag way down. And it seems easier for me to cut them off. I don't like to be, since I'm by myself out here, I don't really like to be leaning over the edge of the roof or anything to hold them up when you cut them. And I find if they're not hanging like this, if they're sticking up, you can just run the saw over it really easily without tempting the, the gods of gravity.
be not too many hangers over there that are too long. I mean, it especially helps that it's not super hot. The hotter it gets, the softer they are, and they'll flop over a lot more. <laughs> Kept my gloves on this time after putting that nail through my finger, and look, it didn't hit my finger, but that's exactly what happened. Stuck it right through. Careful, don't pound them through your fingers. All right, let us pray. I, I mean, let us think. How do we do this thing? Gotta cut this out so we got the vent again. Well, I'll have to go get the vent and see how far over it comes. I think it's going to need one more course of shingles, which will have to be cut off. Let's just chop into it, see what it looks like, see how it goes. All right, let's see how this stuff works. Never used it before. Never vented a roof, at least not out here. Yeah, it's just like one of those green scrubby sponges. I could look at the directions, but as the great red green once said, instructions are just there so you have something to kneel on. <laughs> so I think, that just goes over like yeah, so I definitely need more shingle here, more shingle there. And then as I mentioned in, I don't know if it was this video or the previous one, this is just what I have on hand, so I'm doing a red cap on here. And it does look like, yeah, you just cut that down there and cap it like you normally do with uh, a three tab shingle. That's cool, that looks pretty straightforward. So, a little more shingleage first. Oh, check it, check it, check it, one, two. Nice. What are these, like one and three quarters maybe? I think I've got one and a half, so I definitely didn't have the right nails for that. That's rad. I'm not exactly sure how you do the end here. If you can just put the vent all the way down there and then just have that little opening on the end. I don't know, I guess we'll just figure it out, huh? I'm guessing. Put it on like that, and then probably just have to cut this out. Eh? Don't you think? You do? <laughs> Great. Yeah, I think that'll work. And I just finished uh, The Sun Also Rises by Hemingway. That guy is such an amazing writer, of course, you know, that's not news. I don't think I'm introducing Hemingway to the world or anything, but his writing is great. I'm just not real sure about his story endings. In the few books of his that I've listened to lately, it just seems like, it seems like any of his chapters could just be the end of the book, and that's how the endings feel to me. But what do I know? I'm just an idiot that lives in the woods.
All right, I think that looks good. I guess, what's next? I guess I gotta nip these, cut these off straight in order to figure out where exactly that goes. Oh, this is gonna blast it right in my face, like always. I pre-cut those a little bit close. Quarter inch to spare. I mean, that's that's pure skill. <laughs> uh. Well, I guess there's no sense in leaving these in a coil because I am the nail gun. Think. Is that how you do it? That looks good. Maybe just don't pound them in tight like that. Oh, this is working great. This is um, probably, this is definitely the first time and it'll likely be the only time in my life where the shingles came out exactly right like right on the line on both on both sides that's the amazing thing is it's like this is falling right on the edge of the last course like to the eighth of a eighth of an inch oh man the, the roofing gods are smiling on me today or they're setting me up for something nasty coming down the pike I gotta admit, it kind of freaks me out here in this many planes going overhead. This is not what you would call a major flight path, but just with all the weirdness in the world, you hear something like that constantly and your brain starts going, I uh, kind of wonder what's going on out there. You can't quite see over the trees. Yeah, check this out. There's the edge of the last course. This goes exactly on top of it, on both sides equally. And then this just comes over like another half an inch or something. It's amazing. Amazing. You know what probably happened is the the gods on Mount Bill do a lot of crap. They probably heard that I accidentally skipped the line and became a roofing god myself. Completely on accident, but you know, it's probably all out nuclear war right now. Just because of that, they're upset. I cheated the system on accident. Yeah, you know, if you haven't heard of Mount Bill a lot of crap, that's it's uh it's in uh, Turk Turkmenistan, yeah, or it's, I can't remember, could be Constantinople, no, Istanbul, no, Constantinople, it's nobody's business but the Turks. I think it actually looks pretty rad, I like uh, the different color, of course, it's a look nobody's ever going to see, but I don't know, I think it's cool. I kind of like how simple the vent idea is too, that it's just a bunch of uh, foamy kitchen scrubby stuff. And uh, I'd like to, I looked at some other ridge vents and they had slat, like it was plastic, but it had, you know, lines cut into it. But the holes were so big, all sorts of bugs around here would climb in there. So I kind of like this, that 
I don't think too many bugs are going to be able to get through that stuff. That's a pretty dense, pretty dense weave. They'd have to do some work to get in there. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty sweet. It's hard to describe how good it feels to have the roof done. There's just, there's no room for creativity. It's just kind of like hard on my body and I don't know, I don't get that much pleasure out of doing it. I mean, maybe you can be creative if you know more about roofing. I, I, I'm pretty limited, but man, that feels good to have that done. I think it looks quite nice. Kind of clean up all the scraps on the ground here, put some tools away and then figure out what's next. Either start working on the siding, get the mill out, go out of all those cedar logs, or where do you put the windows and doors in first? I actually don't know. Let's think about it for a minute. We'll figure something out. I wonder how many you can put on there before uh, it sits on the ground. <laughs> That's a lot of weight. <laughs> Clean. Don't, I'm, you guys, I appreciate you offering to help clean up, but that's fine. You, you just, you did fine. Well, it's not quite quitting time yet. Got another, uh, half hour, hour or something. I guess I should put the windows in and I was thinking about doing some of the siding before I get to the windows, like starting down here and working my way up and then stopping there because this thing is incredibly top heavy right now and it really needs siding. I, I already went through and put more bracing on it because when I was up there, you can really feel it rocking around. <laughs> I'm just totally imagining this whole thing coming crashing down. It's not going to, but I do want to get siding on it because it'll firm everything up. But I think instead of siding up to there and then putting the windows in, I better go ahead and put the windows in because there is a darn good chance that I didn't measure all the windows perfectly or something's going to have to be changed. I can actually see that sill plate right there is uh, bowed, like it goes like like this it's high in the center and i can't remember what the tolerances were for that window so that might have to come out and get trimmed so yeah let's go get the windows where are the windows in the trailer oh no they're down in the gazebo that'd be great i need to clean out the gazebo anyway for party week coming up two more days then i gotta get started on that stuff oh more puff balls nice those puff balls that i put in my uh eggs the other day I don't know, one or two videos ago or something. Went back and checked on all that are left. There's actually another, I'll, you know what? I'll just show you. Yeah, so these are some of the batch that I cut from for my eggs the other day. And then my back went out, so I had like, it's at least a week ago that I did that, maybe a week and a half. And you can see they've, they've gone to seed Actually, I think, yeah, this is the batch. Oh yeah, look at these guys. Look at all those spores. I think they have, puffball mushrooms have more, whatever you call it, reproductive cells. They're not seeds, you know, they're spores. It has more reproductive, what's the word? Gametes, not gametes. Anyway, has more than I think any other living thing on the planet. There's something like I don't know, three or five or 10 trillion spores in each mushroom. It's just freaking crazy. I mean, you do believe it. If you see how fine that is, you can't, you would never see one individual. Actually, maybe I should get some of those and put them under the microscope. Anyway, I just noticed right over here, there's a whole bunch of them coming up here, like more than the last batch. Look at, there's just, Tons and tons of them, so that'll be great. In the next week or so, we'll have have mushrooms for everything. But now that they've gone to spore, uh, I was thinking about collecting them. Also, the other reason I think that it might be the end of the world is, uh, I mean, my one or two bars of cell service that I have out here, I've got nothing, and it's been out for a long time. So it may be the end of the world. The downside is I can't look up any, anything on the internet, and I need to do that constantly. So much stuff you gotta know. But I was thinking about getting the spores, putting them in like a milk jug. I think you can mix it, just put water in there, the spores, and then I think there's some other stuff that you can add. 
but if I can't get on the internet and figure it out, maybe I'll just, I don't know, take five or ten of these, put all the spores in a jug, and then just spread it all over here. I would love to have an enormous crop of those every year. Oh, look, there's a false morels coming up, too. Aren't those weird looking? <laughs> Let's see if I can get the whole thing out without setting the spores loose. There we go. <laughs> That's perfect, just got the little tiny hole. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. We need to look under the microscope. Man, my brain got sidetracked. What are we talking about? We're going to get windows and all of a sudden we're mixing up mushroom potions. What am I doing? I got this stuff to make uh, permanent slides. Maybe I'll try that, I've only used it a couple times. But that way I can uh, put these on a slide and keep it. Just one drop I'm sure would be plenty. And probably need the tiniest amount of this too. Probably shouldn't have put my big nasty fingerprint right in the middle of it. They're on there. All right. Got to go get the windows. We'll look at this tonight when it's dark. I can leave the door open now now that all the bugs are gone oh well <laughs> and then I walk face first into a big old spider web oh this is gonna be so fun to put this together and this is the the extra used one and it is filthy oh it's uh my dad got this this is the one left over that I didn't use in the Man cave. It's been just sitting outside this whole time. Don't break, don't break, don't break. All right, let's have a look at them spores. You have to excuse the whirring and noisy fans it takes a lot of power to <laughs> just to process the videos from the camera so i can even edit them pop the card in download the files run it for 30 40 minutes while the jackery's got all its fans going and everything and then i can actually edit them plenty of noise it's funny when you live in a house you just have no idea how much power you're using minute to minute when you use stuff out here, you can always just click the button and see exactly how many watts you're drawing at any point. So it draws about two watts a piece to recharge uh, GoPro batteries. Maybe about the same, a little bit more for the phone. And the computer right now is using about 145 watts just to make those files usable. gosh they are so small I guess if uh, one little mushroom's got five trillion spores in it <laughs> they couldn't be too big Wow it's like dust zoom in again it looks like yeast pellets zoom in again yeah with this microscope all I can really get is little balls that's it huh Use it, I've got it on the highest magnification, which I never even used that looking at anything else. And even that is still just little tiny round balls, kind of, I can't even get it focused on them. At the highest magnification on this, the focal plane, which is like the amount of an object, the thickness of an object you can focus on at one, any one point. So if you're at low magnification, you could see something like this and it would look like, you know, a ball. And you go to a higher magnification and you can only see a slice of it. And then you go to really high magnification 
you can only see the thinnest slice of it, but when you've got something three-dimensional, you can only focus on one piece of it at a time. Wow, there's just nothing you can see. That's amazing. All right, I think it's uh, almost time to do some editing and then uh, do some sleeping, then some windows. Can't wait. I couldn't help myself. I got so much stuff to clean out of my cooler, so I uh, thought I'd make some make an omelet and I just found a whole bunch more puffballs, so we're gonna have an omelet. Got a little bit of chopped up ham, some uh, jalapenos, and uh, some brie. Would brie be good in there? I guess so, and some mushrooms. Oh, oh, jeez. <coughs> Those are some hot peppers. Oh, wow. That scorched the back of my mouth. Yikes. Can't wait to eat them. Little brie just to make it fancy. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. Mmm. Finally that time of year where you can get a good apple. Man, that is a good one. I love a fresh honey crisp. You know what I just thought of? I think this is the first time in a year, year and a half, that I haven't had French toast for breakfast. <laughs> it's a pretty good mix of eggs and flavors, so we'll let it go this once. I'll get back on it tomorrow. The brie and mushrooms and jalapenos are like a great mix together. I just had a good thought. Next week, party week, we'll eat anything at any price. Anything that sounds good, we just get it. A lot of porterhouse, ribeyes, that kind of stuff. One night, I'm definitely going to get like a two-pound ribeye. Cook it nice and medium rare over the fire. When I say cook it, I mean I'll have Tito cook it because he's a master fire griller. The important thing is I'm going to top it all with an enormous bowl full of puffball mushrooms and sauteed garlic. Oh! oh. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I ought to do something. What time is it? Let's see. It's 10.15. I woke up at 4.30 today. <laughs> I don't know where the last six hours went. I mean, there was a, a short nap in there too. I fell back asleep as I always do reading in the morning. Oh yeah, windows. All right, let's do windows. Anybody want to take bets as to whether or not all three of those windows will fit in the, in the areas I have provided? I won't be surprised if at least one of them doesn't fit. Like I got the, you know, the whole turn sideways or something. Uh oh. It has to go in from outside. Well, let's just see if it fits. Ooh. Yep. We got one that fits. <laughs> Isn't that something? Oh yeah, this has a tab around the outside. Which they don't. All these, all three of these are mismatched. No, no two are alike. I think this is the only one. Oh no, there's one other with the tab too. Yeah, that goes in, nails on the outside of the frame. And then, interesting, I guess the uh, siding goes in here. I hope this is an inch. My guess is it's not. It looks like it's like three quarters of an inch. That little gully in there, so you can poke the siding right in there. If it's not a full inch, might have to trim down the edges of the siding, or I can just butt it to here and then trim the whole thing around. Eh, we'll figure something out. This is the one I'm a little worried about. Let's not cut the screen. Just because this, uh, this window sill is really bowed. Oh, it's, yeah, it's pretty bowed. It's like almost a half inch. Yeah, maybe only a quarter inch up in the middle. That should be all right. Well, what do you know? Just by chance, they all do have that flange around there. And they all have that space for the siding. Let's see if that is a full inch. Nope, three quarters. Darn. Bummer, bummer. Well, there is one other option, too is just to make all the siding three quarters. I mean, the siding on the outside, you got a layer of three quarter or one inch, and then like a house wrap 
insulation, and then another cedar board inside. I like to stay with the standard measurements because I always end up with scraps of stuff left over or I've already got something made that I need and just, you know, having the fewest thicknesses laying around uh, seems to be the easiest. But this is a lot of milling here and I've never actually milled anything thinner than an inch. Maybe I will do three quarters. I don't know why I wouldn't. I mean, this is going to be all the cedar I have. You know what? Screw it. Let's do three quarters. Let's try it out. Well, this is really a really backwards way of thinking about this, but when you mill with a chainsaw, say you cut a two inch slab, you're taking out like a third of an inch just in the kerf, just the cut. So to make a two inch board, you need two and a third of an inch. And that, you know, that kerf goes to sawdust. When you make a real thin board, like say you make a half inch board, you're actually losing a half plus a third. And just as a fraction, it seems like you're making more waste, although you are still getting more boards out of a log. You get that? You see how that's a stupid way to think? Let's do it. Let's do three quarters. Why not? Try something new. Let's see if we got the hole right. Oh, yep. Oh, baby. Two for two. Wow. This is freaking sweet. This is uh, the brand new window that my dad and I found for $35 at the ReStore. 35 bucks, brand new. That's not a name I recognize, but still, it wouldn't be, uh, it'd be at least $37 if you bought it at the building store. We're gonna go three for three. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes when I build, but uh, I got lucky on this one. Man, I must have really been paying attention. Well, I guess before I can pop those in, I need to take some of these braces off. I might actually just cut it out of there or move it over. You know, when you don't picture out the whole project in your head ahead of time, or write it all down, or really have any idea what you're doing, occasionally you come across steps that you're like, oh yeah, this is completely backwards. I was thinking I'd pop the windows in, put the siding around them, and as the siding goes up from the bottom, I was just going to cut these uh, braces off of here, and then I realized I got to roll a house wrap, cheapo house wrap to put around this thing before I uh, put the siding on which means all these braces are in the way now. I guess it'll take a few minutes to pull them all off and move them to the inside, one by one. <laughs> be funny if I took them all off and tried to move them. I bet the last one I pop off, the whole thing would just fall over. It's not that bad, calm down, jeez. Well, let's see. Oh, I mean, yeah, look, check it out. They all got switched just like that. I just snapped my fingers. Uh, just looked at the weather. It's supposed to have a lot of wind today and tomorrow. I only have staples to hold the wrap on. I think once it gets ripping here, it's supposed to blow like, I don't know, gusts over 20 or 25 or something. I'm afraid it's all, the house wrap is gonna get ruined. I'm thinking I uh, better shift gears and start dragging some logs up here. That's another thing I have to figure out is if I wanna mill everything down there at the pile of logs, uh, I'd have to make saw horses or take them down there. Let's go have a look, shall we? So, oh my gosh, I somehow got to get all those up there. It's really just a question of, do I want to take them up there as logs? Or do I want to take them up there as lumber? It's kind of a pain to bring the milling stuff, other than like milling one giant log or something to do all this milling down here. Because every day I got to do something with all my tools and, you know, I get going and forget something. I don't know, it's just a lot of back and forth. So I guess I could, the only downside of dragging these all the way back there is they're all gonna get dirty. But I think since they've been sitting here for, I don't know, a few months, 
I think it's they're going to peel quite easily. So I guess the dirt doesn't matter. The other thing is it's going to tear up the trail something horrendous, dragging, what, 20, 30 logs up here. All this grass right down the middle is just going to be gone. I do what I can to keep grass in the middle of the trails just because any, any plants growing there with roots just keep the trails from washing out and getting too muddy, but it would really rip it up. The other option, I guess, is to put these all on the trailer. Some of the big ones I might not be able to get on there. I think I'll start doing that. Maybe I'll just take a bunch of the small logs up on the trailer, a few at a time, and dump them up there. Well, I'll do the small ones and uh, get them up there and then see what we got left that I can't lift and figure it out from there. Man, these are some tiny logs. Some of these aren't going to be hardly worth milling. Ah, that's not enough. We could fit another one. <laughs> that's probably good. fed a few more logs on there. I've got room up here. I moved all this stuff back. I'm going to try to get that entire pile up here because as you guys know I like I love chainsaw milling and I especially like it when I don't have to stop. You know you get everything set up if the weather's nice you don't have to put too much stuff away at the end of the day you can just get up in the morning and mill all day and just do that for a few days it's i don't know so satisfying plus i get to listen to a lot of books so we'll see if we can fit that whole pile up here without too much trouble I know, I know, it's a wimpy load. I'm just trying to be good to my back. It's not 100% yet, and I'd hate to set it back another week or two. You're right, you're right, that's nothing but excuses. I gotta do better. Yeah, these are almost too small to be good for anything. I had to go back for a couple of them. I got all the way up here, had a, a pretty impressive load. Got all the way up here and uh, there was nothing left. <laughs> One small log in the trailer. They were just spread out over the last 300 yards back there. I think I got most of the light ones, so I'm gonna go back with the uh, Timber Tough log tongs and uh, I guess just drag them back here. Took a whole freaking day. <laughs> Move a couple logs, unwrap a couple windows, the whole day is gone. Guess we'll get to milling tomorrow. Wow, this is a lot of milling. It's gonna be super fun. It's all cedar, they're all relatively small. 
They're like the ideal logs for my mill, my chainsaw. This is gonna be sweet. It's gonna have a massive, like this, bigger, a bigger pile of lumber than even the logs are that, you know, it's gonna be, it triples in size, you know. So we'll do that magic tomorrow. Well, that didn't happen. I thought I was gonna be milling a couple days ago, but it takes two, it takes a lot longer than I remembered to get ready for party week. Been hauling water and I don't know, just had a whole bunch of stuff to, to do. I also had to go searching for some ammo. I uh, had some binary explosive <laughs> that I was gonna use as a surprise when my family, my dad, my brother, nephew were here, I don't know, quite a while ago. I was gonna put it out on the shooting range and as we walk through, just tell them to shoot, shoot that thing down there. But turns out you can't set it off with a 22, so I found some 3030. And I got my cowboy gun here. So we'll definitely have to uh, use up that explosive for party week. I know what you're thinking, this party week thing is getting a little out of hand already and nobody's even here yet. It's true. Tito's actually going to be here in a few hours, so uh, that's it for this video. Come back next week, see if uh, anybody died or we all got mushroom poisoning. Who knows? You know, you just never don't during party week. So actually party week I think is party 10 days now and as soon as everybody's gone probably take a day or two to put stuff away and then we'll do a bunch of milling and then it's not really going to take much time at all to wrap that place throw the windows on that's no work at all and then just start ripping and putting siding on. It's a good thing I didn't put that house wrap on there because I mean normally when you'd wrap a house I mean you'd, you'd frame the walls put uh, OSB or you know plywood or whatever on the outside and then you put the house wrap and then siding. This doesn't have that OSB on there. This is just studs and then siding. So if you put the house wrap on just on the studs and the wind gets going, there's nothing to stop the wind. It would have definitely all got shredded. So I'm glad I didn't do that, but it's gonna be quick and easy to put the rest of it together. We're getting so close. It almost has an inside. Come back in a week or two and see if we're all still here.